Greetings from Academia IAPSM eConnect. I am Dr. Annapurni Vishwanathan from Grand Medical College, Mumbai. We, the team Achilles, humbly present before you the 11th capsule of the Public Health Update series for the month from July to September 2022. The contents of this video will be dealt with in three parts. The first part will focus on Mission Shakti and World Population Day. The second part will focus on Pradhan Mantri TB Mukt Bharat Abhiyan, SRS Statistical Report 2020 and National List of Essential Medicines 2022. The third part will focus on Servovac Vaccine, Food Standards Regulation and its update and Sakusol Initiative. So, let's begin with the first part. Mission Shakti is a scheme which is an integrated women empowerment program launched by the Ministry of Women and Child Development. The vision and mission of the scheme is aimed at strengthening interventions for women's safety, security and empowerment. It seeks to realize the government's commitment for women-led development by addressing issues affecting women on a life cycle continuum basis. It also tackles pervasive gender biases and discriminations. It seeks to focus on improving convergence across different ministries and also to promote greater participation and support of the local level governance bodies. Mission Shakti has two sub-schemes, Sambal which is for safety and security of women and Samarthya which is for empowerment of women. In the Sambal sub-scheme, the existing scheme of one-stop center, women helpline, Betty Bachao, Betty Padao have been included with modifications and a newer component of Nari Adalat has been added which is a women's court that provides alternative grievance redressal to resolve petty disputes at Gram Panchayat level. In the Samarthya sub-scheme, the existing schemes of Ujwala, Swadagrah and Working Women Hostel have now been included with modifications. In addition, the existing schemes of National Credit Scheme and Pradhan Mantri Matru Mandan Yojana under Umbrella ICDS scheme have now been included in Samarthya. Moving on to the next update, I shall be discussing the important health days in the month of July and updates pertaining to it. Every year, World Population Day is observed on July 11 to highlight the problems of overpopulation and also to raise the awareness about its effect on the environment. The theme of the World Population Day 2022 is a world of 8 billion towards a resilient future for all, harnessing opportunities and ensuring rights and choices for all. On this occasion, the Population Division of the Department of Economic and Social Affairs of the United Nations Secretariat has released the 2022 Revision of World Population Prospects. It presents the population estimate from 1950 to the present year for 237 countries and also population projection to the year 2100. For the very first time, the estimates and projections are presented in one-year intervals of age and time uh, instead of the five-year intervals which was used previously. This latest assessment considers the results of National Population Census, Vital Registration System and Nationally Representative Sample Surveys. There are different ways to access the data based on indicators such as location and data range. An online database provides access to interactive data visualization including an open API for programmatic access. This overview will introduce users to the main features of the UN Population Division data portal. Thank you. Hi everyone. I am Dr. Tamil Maran from Mahatma Gandhi Medical College, Puducherry. I will be continuing on the next session of National Program for Tuberculosis, Pradhan Mandri TB Muk Bharat Abhiyan. India has the world's highest tuberculosis burden. For effective engagement of community in path towards ending TB in India, Ministry of Health and Family Welfare has implemented the community support to TB patients. Pradhan Mandri TB Muk Bharat Abhiyan on 9th September 2022, which includes Nikshai 2.0, a campaign to mobilize and render community support for TB patients, virtually launched by Honorable President Draupadi Murmu. The objectives of this initiative are to provide additional patient support to improve treatment outcomes, to augment community involvement in meeting India's commitment to end TB by 2025, to leverage corporate social responsibility activities. It also involves Nikshai, Mitra or donor, which include cooperative societies, corporates, elected representatives, individuals, institutions, NGOs, political parties and partners who can support by accelerating response against TB to complement government efforts in coordination with district administration. The support by Mitras may be nutritional supplement, additional investigation for diagnostic TB patient, vocational support. The operational plan for this initiative involves preparation of district and state administration and dissemination of plan towards 
beneficiaries, potential Nikshay Mitras and implementers, identification and registration of Nikshay Mitras, following which Mitra is contacted by district tuberculosis officer to facilitate discussion, planning and implementation of support, need assessment of TB patient in selected geographies and type of assistance to be provided by Nikshay Mitras, frequency, quality and mode of delivery services is confirmed by district tuberculosis officer. Reporting on Nikshay portal through Nikshay Mitra dashboard for grievance readdressing. The expected outcome of this initiative uh, is to community involvement and additional support to TB patient shall result in better treatment outcomes, reduction in out of pocket expenditure for family of TB patients. Moving on to next update, which is regarding statistical report of sample registration system for the year 2020. SRS statistical report was released by Office of Registered General of India on 22nd September 2022. Here are some of the highlights. Infant mortality rate has registered 2 point decline from 30 per thousand live birth in 2019 to 28 per thousand live birth in 2020 with annual decline rate of 6.7 percentage. Neonatal mortality rate has also declined from 22 per thousand live birth in 2019 to 20 per thousand live birth in 2020 with annual decline rate of 9.1 percentage. Six states which includes Delhi, Tamil Nadu, Maharashtra, Jammu and Kashmir, Punjab have already attained sustainable development goals target of neonatal mortality rate of less than or equal to 12 per thousand live birth. Under 5 mortality rate has significantly declined 3 points with annual decline rate of 8.6 percent from 35 per thousand live birth in 2019 to 32 per thousand live birth in 2020. 11 states Kerala, Tamil Nadu, Delhi, Maharashtra, Jammu and Kashmir, Karnataka, Punjab, West Bengal, Telangana, Gujarat and Himachal Pradesh have already attained sustainable development goals target of under 5 mortality rate of less than or equal to 25 per thousand live birth. My next, next update is on National List of Essential Medicine. National List of Essential Medicine was first formulated in 1996. It plays an important role in ensuring accessibility of affordable quality of medicine at all levels of healthcare. This will give boost to cost effective quality medicines and contribute towards reduction in out of pocket expenditure of healthcare of citizens. It was revised earlier in 2003, 2011 and 2015. Now again revision of list has been done in 2022 with addition of 34 drugs which includes ivermectin, meropinum, mupirocin, terpinafine, ormilaxifin and montelukast and deletion of 26 drugs which includes chlorpheniramine malate, methyl dopa, atenolol, white petroleum and anti-ulcer medicines like sucralfit and ranitidine. Also health minister notifies the inclusion of coronary stents in the list, a move that will help and make these life-saving medical devices more affordable. Currently, 384 drugs are available in the list. Thank you. Hello everyone, I am Dr. Kishore from Online Institute of Hygiene and Public Health, Kolkata. I am continuing with the health update on Max. Union Minister Dr. Jitendra Singh has announced India's first indigenously developed vaccine server web for the prevention of cervical cancer this September. It is a quadrivalent human papilloma virus vaccine with L1 virus-like particles of serotypes 6, 11, 16 and 18. It is developed by CIM Institute of India in collaboration with Department of Biotechnology and BIRAC. It has completed the phase 3 trial and it was conducted as a multicentric interventional trial in the age group of 9 to 26 years in 3 dose regimen. The results of the trial are yet to be released and the market, uh, Drug Controller General of India has granted market authorization in July this year. Moving on to my next update on the new patient safety initiative. This update is about the new initiative under the same framework of National Quality Assurance Program. 
released by the National Health System Resource Center. This new initiative is known as Circusial Initiative. Circusial is safety and quality self-assessment tool for health facilities. It aims to enhance the visibility and implementation of patient safety practices in healthcare facilities. The ultimate aim of this initiative is to work the zero preventable harm. The self-assessment tool provides a framework where the health facility can assess its status in terms of patient safety and take action to deliver the safer patient care. This initiative scores the health facility with the help of a checklist by assessing four broader areas of concern, which are patient care practice, clinical risk management, safer care environment, and the patient safety system. These four areas of broader areas of concern are assessed by 16 standards, which in turn are determined by elements. And these in turn are again assessed by the attributes or checkpoints. These scores can be used by the health facility to improve the areas of concern in order to enhance the patient safety. Moving on to my last update on the food regulation. The Food Standard Safety Authority of India has re released the first amendment on the patient safety and standards regulation, which is regarding the preparation of the soya bean curd and its labeling in the subsection of mixed millet flour. The first regulation regarding the preparation of the soya bean curd, where uh, the fermentation is carried out by the mixed cultures of lactic acid bacteria or any other suitable cultures. The preparation may be plain or sweetened and a flavor. Milk or reconstituted milk may be added in aqueous extract of soybean. If added, it shall not exceed 25% of the final product. Alternate culture can be used in the fermentation process, which is prepared by the mixed cultures of lactobacillus species along with the streptococcus thermophilus. If prepared with dairy without dairy ingredients, following decla declaration shall be on the label as non-dairy product. If Prepared with dairy ingredients, following declaration shall be made on the label as with low dairy ingredients. With this, we conclude our updates for the month of July to September 2022. Our team Achilles, comprised of Dr. Anna Purni, Dr. Tamil Mar, and myself, Dr. Kishab. At this point, we would like to extend our sincere gratitude to our mentors, Dr. Girisa and Dr. Sneha Latamam, for their constant support and motivation. We would also like to thank our advisors, Dr. Malathi sir, Dr. Akansha ma and Dr. Parak sir for their support and bringing us all to this platform. We would also take this opportunity to extend our sincere gratitude to the senior IAPSM office bearers. Thank you for your time and hope you all are positively enlightened with these updates. The Academy IAPSM eConnect will soon come up with the updates for the month of October and November 2022. Kindly subscribe to our channel Academia IAPism eConnect and click on the bell icon to receive the notification. Till we meet again, stay connected, stay safe. Thank you.